Amen. Are we online? Are we good to go? All right, let's greet our online campus. We're so glad you're joining with us today. And we're so glad a few of you are joining us in person today. We see you. Not just you see us, but we see you today. And uh, we're so glad to be in the house of the Lord. Um, before we change your order service, we've got some uh, friends from out of town, Micah and Carrie Weinberg. If you guys want to um, run up here real quick and give us a shout, a little report of what God's doing. They're from the Door Fellowship, Pastor Matt and Rachel Holcomb. They're part of uh, the people that just feed into me and Jen's lives so much and uh, help make us who we are. And by them pouring into our lives, they're pouring into your lives too. And uh, we're just so thankful for them to be here today. And ask them just to share and greet you guys today in the Lord. Amen. Let's welcome them today. Amen. It is, uh, we surprised Pastor Matt coming up this weekend. Pulled a little track on him and to help a Pastor Jen. And so I showed up at his wrestling tournament. And uh, he's out there cheering for some players. And I just walked right in front of him. And he kind of nodded and looked down and looked up again. He goes, what are you doing here? I think I travel four hours to come see my best friend out here. But uh, this is my family. We got three little kids here. We got Laree, Ezra, Morgan, and my beautiful wife, Carrie. And she's raising all four of us. So we are healthy and we kind of look decent today because of her and everything. But uh, it's just awesome to be here. And uh, just to kind of tee off, I, I pay attention to announcements. My job at the church, I'm the announcement guy. And there's another guy we do it together. And so announcements are a big deal to me. And, and I just heard some things and I'm like, man, that's exactly like, this is my alley, so I like, like, and you guys are going to be doing Titus, so I'm going to do a little sneak peek, Titus 2.7. It says, and you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works for every time. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Now, you guys had your announcements, you talked about bowling night, and Pastor Matt and Jan talked about inviting friends. That is vital. You don't realize the testimony you have just fellowshipping. We think we need to do it here from the pulpit or we need to have a three-point sermon. But there is more lives being changed when you allow them into your life. Have them come to bowling night and let them see an atmosphere of people all thinking the same way, in love with God, fellowship together. They're not swearing. They're not talking about bad things. They are enjoying life to the fullest. And in your conversation, we're talking about, and this is what God did in my life. This is what God did in my friend's life. This is what God did in our marriage. And they're hearing that and they're like, oh, my gosh, I want part of that. That's vital. Bowling night is huge. It's going to tear down walls. It's going to set people free. It's going to be huge breakdown. And then you talk about social media. And I have a testimony for that because this is something where my wife's in charge of social media. She does a lot of posts. We do our YouTube. We think, and people are watching right now online, we don't know how many people are really watching. We don't know who it's impacting. I know one time at work, uh, a lady stopped me, and she had some questions. She's having struggles with her son, and she knew I used to work in youth ministry. So she just had simple questions. I didn't give deep biblical foundation stuff. I just said, well, listen, your son has an attitude problem because the divorce you're going through. This is what you need to talk to him about. This is, this, this is where he's struggling with. It's just simple key things. And she goes, what church you go to? And I mentioned the door and she thanked me and all that. That was three years ago. Over the holidays, I get a text from her. She goes, why is your um, YouTube not working today? And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I checked and I was like, all right, here's the deal. It's our children's program and we don't have the signature releases to put all the kids on social media. So we're not allowed to stream today. She goes, oh. I was like, oh, I didn't know you're watching. She goes, Micah, I've been watching since the last three years, since the day you talked to me. For three years, she's been following us. We had no idea. And so it's vital. It's vital. Always encourage when you see friends. Yeah, you can check out the church online. Yeah, you can check us out on social media. You will not understand the open doors that brings up. I mean, here she's been getting fed for three years, biblical foundations. And I noticed it when I get back to work because we're now we're back in the office, her lifestyle is different. She smiles more. There's a lot more freedom and everything. And she's talking about breakthroughs in her son's life. And so it's powerful. So there's a key off of the announcements again. Just take advantage of that. Use these resources the church provides and use that as a tool to reach others. And it just don't be shocked when God opens doors. And we love you guys. Thank you for having us here. We love surprising the pastors and all that. And uh, it's so good to be back here. We can't wait to hear the sermon tonight. We're looking so excited for this. So, all right. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Amen. God is so good. All right, at this time, we will release NB Kids Ministry workers. We love you guys. Thank you so much for volunteering and serving in the house and pouring into our children, not just babysitting, but building lives on the foundation of the rock. Amen. The rock, Christ Jesus. At this time, hey, uh, so, so you know, um, if, if you, you don't know my schedule, uh, this is wrestling season, postseason. This is where everything wraps up. 
So uh, the last two weeks, uh, our founding pastor, my dad, has been delivering a sermon. Uh, today, my mom, a part of the, the tag team dynamic duo, the founding pastors of the church, will be delivering the sermon. Um, and then as we go into uh, this final week of wrestling, we'll, we actually have two of our wrestlers, one of them from our house right here, uh, Abe Keep, from, uh, Chrissy's son. Uh, made it to states. So we have two kids on our team made it to the state finals. So we'll be leaving Wednesday, coming back late Saturday night. So pray for us, pray for the, the ministry, and uh, keep us safe. And uh, man, pray for our opportunities I can minister in that arena. Amen. And I love that. Get to talk to so many coaches, wrestlers from all over the state. And uh, it's a fantastic open door uh, for God to use us through that. So we're excited about that. So we'll have one more. Uh, in-house guest ministry next Sunday. You have to come to find out who and hear the word. But And then after that, I'll be back, amen? And you better be ready because it'll be four weeks off and I'll be rip raring ready to go. So um, God is good. So would you stand with me and welcome one of our founding fat pastors, Sister Ann Friend, as she comes up. I'll go get the other pulpit. Okay, you can all sit down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's been a while. <laughs> Praise God. We are going to be teaching out of our song ministry today. I am teaching out of Ezekiel and uh, the dry bones and the valley. Uh, Holly picked all the, all the right songs. And praise the Lord. I hope by the time you leave here today, you will be speaking to some of your dry bones. Praise God. He is so good to us. I don't know what kind of week you had. I had a wonderful week in the Lord. And we've learned the last two weeks what's in your heart and then what's in your, what's in your hand and then what's in your heart. And today it is uh, who is the Lord to you and what you hear and speak. Praise God. All righty, I will start. Boy, pages on top of pages here. Okay, Ezekiel 37, 1 through 16. Everybody know this story? Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to read it. The hand of the Lord was upon me, this is Ezekiel, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and sent me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of dry bones. Think of you. The Lord takes you somewhere and shows you a bunch of dead people. Already. You're probably in a bad place. You know, you're probably already thinking, what am I going to do about this? Now, in our lives, we have a whole lot of dry bones. We have unsafe family. We have unsaved un, uh, circumstances. We have uh, places where we just are confused. We don't understand. Those are dry bones. Those are dead things in our life. And we got to realize when we come to that spot, rely on on the Lord, because we all have dry bones in our life. <coughs> and it's not a one-time thing. It's over and over and over, all through your life. Oh, what do you, what, okay, let's go on and read this. Two, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Dry is dry. <laughs> we have big problems and we have little problems. But they were dry bones, and they were very dry. <laughs> I got a kick out of that part. I thought, well, something's dry. We all have had dried food, but what's very dry? <laughs> Turns into potato chips. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> and he said unto me, son of a man, can these bones live? And I answered, Lord, you know. Sometimes the Lord will ask us a question, and we cannot answer. We don't have the faith to know. We hear someone has a disease or something, will you pray? And part of your brain goes, well, I'll pray, but I don't have hope. And so what did Elijah say? Or Yeah, Elijah. Ezekiel say, God, you know. That's a good cop out. Of course God knows. When we're praying about something, of course he knows. But it just uh, it was kind of funny, Ezekiel, he goes, God, you know. And a good, again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones. If the Lord told you to prophesy, 
on a problem that's in your life, do you have the faith to prophesy to it? Do you have the hope to prophesy to it? Or do you just look at it like it's a dead bone? It's very dead, dried up, very dry. And quit praying about it? We can't quit praying. My sister prayed 25 years before she saw her husband saved. 25 years. And our whole family said, throw it away. <laughs> you know. And she prayed, and she saw him saved for six months before he went to be with the Lord. <clears throat> and he wasn't just saved. <clears throat> he was saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> he had read three Bibles in that six months. In six months. And it was just wonderful. She kept believing. Praise the Lord. So don't give up. Your time is not God's time. And God's time is not your time. We will believe what the Lord says. Okay, uh, thus saith the Lord God unto these, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, into you, and you shall live. Wow, and I will lay muscle upon you, and you will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. What does the Lord have to do in your life before you stop and say, Yes, he is the Lord? What happens in your life before you're sure and you can't be shaken and you're upon the rock? And no matter what happens and who says what, you know the Lord is the Lord. Today we're hearing and seeing a lot of things. In the last days it says we shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. I don't know why we're all unraveled. We know we're going to hear. The Bible says so. Read the word. And uh, he wants us to live and to know how to pray. And to pray and to keep our eyes on him. He said, my seed will never go begging for bread. And I want to tell you, this body, we have given away bread for 35 years. There's no way we're going to go begging for bread. And this week, I learned how to make canned bread. So we're going to have bread. <laughs> All right. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. When you're praying, do you ever hear a noise? We had someone pray in this house. We were having 24-hour prayer, and it was 2 in the morning. It was it. We did an hour apiece. Uh, 2 in the morning, he heard a noise when he was praying, and he ran out of the building. Didn't lock the doors, didn't shut the lights off. He left. Next person came in, and nobody was here. He heard the noise, and he stopped. If you hear a noise when you're praying, don't stop. Don't stop. Keep praying. Hallelujah. And behold, a shaking. A shaking. We all know what happened with Paul and Silas in the jail when there was a shaking. If you feel a shaking, I've been in services where women start shaking. I knew a man that started shaking. The spirit of the Lord was on him, and he just shake and shake it. Someone said, should we call 911? I said, leave him alone. <laughs> the Lord's do dealing with him. He's either loosening him from something or putting something in. Let God deal with people. And if you start shaking when you're praying, it's okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the bones came together bone to bone. And when I beheld, lo, the muscle and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Think about this picture. I don't know if you think about pictures when you're reading the Bible, but here's standing a bunch of dead people. We've all gone to funeral parlors. How would you feel if that guy or girl, woman got up and stood up? Still not breathing, but standing up. You probably would run out. <laughs> but here is Ezekiel. I don't know why I want to call this guy Elijah every day. But Ezekiel, he has this whole army of men standing up, but they're still dead. What would you do? How would you feel? The Lord answers part of your question, part of your uh, promise. 
but not the whole thing yet. Are you ready to call it false? Are you ready to walk away from it? Or are you ready to hang on? Are you going to hold on? But Lord, this ain't how I, I imagined you, that you would raise up dead people and they're still dead? Why didn't you do the whole thing? And sometimes we think that. Well, Lord, you brought them into the church. You got them saved, but they're not changing. Lord, change them. Lord, do a work in them. You know he is and we don't know it. The Lord works on people when we don't even know what he's doing. He is working inside them. He is changing their knower that now they know the voice of the Lord. Now they know the word is true. Now they know without a doubt. Our knower has to grow within us because also in the last days are many false prophets. And we have to know when they're talking, uh uh, this isn't my Jesus. Uh uh, this isn't from my Bible. Uh uh, no, no, I will not accept that. And I don't care if five million people accept it. If my knower says no, it's no. But Lord, so-and-so is believing it. Lord, so-and-so is preaching it. Lord, so-and-so I love forever. And uh, he just is standing on this. And he says, I'm foolish because I don't believe it. No. Remember, people out there, they do not command us. The voice of the Lord commands us. Don't worry about they make fun. They mock you. Who would you rather have against you? People or the Lord? When I get in that circumstance, I think, oh, well, I guess you're going to walk away because I am believing the Lord. We have to get strong like that in these days. Believe the Lord all the way. Believe what the Lord says. Don't worry about them, they, and theirs. Don't worry about that. You show me in scripture, if you want to counsel me and you don't have scripture, you better believe it's going to go in this ear and out that ear. Some people just get saved and they want to counsel us. And they've only been saved a short time. How long have you been saved? How long have you been reading the word of God? How long have you known the Lord? And you're going to take advice from unsaved people or newly saved people? Think about it next time you ask an unsaved person for advice. Just think about it. What do they know? <coughs> they don't know your God. They don't know him. In the vis midst of the valley, uh, you see the Lord in there. Who could stand up? dead people but God who can save a drunkard but God who can heal a cancerous patient but God who can bring a prodigal son home but God who can make a man see the things of the Lord that he has refused for 25 years but God who can give you a child when everybody told you you couldn't have one but God who who can change our life but God? Only God. Only God. We can't even pat ourselves on the back. I don't know about you. I couldn't do it if I tried. But we are not the ones that get the glory for our lives. Oh, you are so different, God. <laughs> you talk different, God. You dress different, God. You act different, God. He gets all the glory. All the glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. So here is Ezekiel standing there with an army of dead people standing up. <laughs> if I could draw, I'd draw that picture. <clears throat> then said he unto me in verse 9, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds. Could you say the word of the Lord to the air? Or are you worried someone might see you? Someone might talk to you. 
Sometimes I go outside and I'll just say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, spread your word throughout this neighborhood, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let all my children go forth shouting your word. Let all my grandchildren grow stronger and stronger and stronger in you, Lord. Let them grow knowing you from the beginning to the end. Let my great-grandchildren, Lord, have you planted so deep that as there is no idea, no wind, no doctrine can take them out of your hand. In the name of Jesus. I go outside and I walk the, the square of my yard and I'm proclaiming this stuff to the wind. And one day, one of my neighbors, Patty, come over and she says, I didn't see anybody out there. Who were you talking to? And I says, I was talking to the wind. I was proclaiming my family. And then I start mentioning the people in the church by name. Lord, you see them, the circles they can meet and testify to that I will never know these people. Use them, Lord, to open their mouth. Let that word float to the top. Let it run out of their mouth. And even if... It, once it comes out, they think, why did I say that? Let them know it's because of you, Lord. Let them know it's because of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain. See, they're still dead. He said slain. Breathe upon these dead people, Lord, that they may live. Hallelujah. There is no situation our God is not king over. No situation. Oh, hallelujah. He said that, that they may live. I can't imagine looking. You know, there have been times I've gone to funeral parlors and I've prayed over the person to get up. Or I've gone to ICU and they died and we prayed that they would raise up. I can't imagine if there was, I don't know how many here, hundreds. It was an army, so who knows a bunch of them, and pray that they may live. Wow. Their clothes were all probably blood-stained. I don't know about it. I don't know if the clothes just automatically came on them or what when uh, they stood up. <laughs> they were bones. How did this happen? They all, the, and when the muscle starts going on them and the skin, and then they stand... Did the clothes just come up with them? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is so marvelous. I may ask him when we get to heaven, Lord, show me this picture. How did this happen? Remember, we're going to be there a long time. There's not an expiration date on heaven. <laughs> we're going to be there. And who knows, by the time we're there, I may not even care, but it sounds like a good movie. <laughs> okay. So I prophesied as, a, as he commanded, and the breath came into them, and they lived. Was there a bunch of coughing going on? Or did they just inhale? Think about how did that breath come in? I mean, he didn't breathe into them like he did to Adam. Just all of a sudden, their lungs were filled with his precious air. <gasps> and what did they think? And what did Ezekiel think? Like, what am I going to do with these people now? You know, you, they were people just like us. I read this, and sometimes you think, well, Ezekiel was a mighty man, you know. He walked around with uh, halos and everything. No, he didn't. He looked just like the guy sitting beside you. He was just a guy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <coughs> and they stood, uh, 10, and uh, they stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. I don't know if your Bible tells you how many there were there, but the word, the, the use of the word exceeding great army doesn't sound like one, two, ten, hundred. It sounds like an exceeding army great army oh if you ever felt like running that's probably when I would have ran you know we we'll stand up and now this, all, this army's breathing and they're looking at me and what are they thinking and oh lord help me now <laughs> 
Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Well, in that verse, I put my house, the whole house of friends. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost, but we are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of the living. I know it says Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And you shall put my spirit in you and you shall live. Exist. Live. Live. That means you command your day. You live through your day. Don't get those Monday, what they call Monday molly grubs or something. <laughs> I don't know. And I shall place you in your own land, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. The word of the Lord came again. Don't stop when you get one prophecy answered. One promise. Some word, people don't like the word prophecy. Okay, promise. When you get a promise answered, don't stop. There is an again, and there is an again, and there is an again. Hallelujah. As long as we are on this earth, we're not done. Hallelujah. There is many agains in our life. Don't be satisfied where you are. Want to grow in God. Want to know him more. Want to be more like him. Not just, uh, oh, I go to church on Sunday. I got my stickers. You know, when the Lord calls us home, he is not going to ask us what our stickers are and how many we got. You know, a new refrigerator verse I got out of this was Joel 2, 27. Praise the Lord. Did I put it up? And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Put your name there. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Wow. In this day and age, my people shall never be ashamed. Wow. Wow. You know, and uh, when you prophesy to your situation, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word before you see it. Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Beyond dead promises, hear the word of the Lord. What has the Lord said about you? You know if you've read the word. And uh, the son of David, it says in the New Testament, have mercy on me. And what did Jesus say? Surely I will. Sometimes we get in prayer like that. Have mercy on me, Lord. Help me through this thing. And uh, he says, I will. I will. What does the Lord say in his word about your life? With God's breath in us, we must live. How will he cause his breath to enter us? Through the wind, through storms, through fire, through everyday circumstances. Next time. You're in something, stop and inhale. The, wor the world even tells you to do that. Now stop, breathe. <laughs> Next time we get into circumstances and we know we need God like never before, stop and breathe and give him a minute to steer you right. Oh, boy, the Lord God breathe that we may live. Obedience to God in verse 7, and I again promise, prophesied as he commanded. Once you come into obedience to him, you will see life promises will be fulfilled like dominoes. You will be part of that great army. And after all that, sometimes people get discouraged. And uh, they indeed say, don't get caught up in all that stuff. Excuse me, what I was caught up in before wasn't that good. So I will get caught up in all that stuff. People say things like even you're, you're uh, uh, not brainwashed. Yeah, brainwashed. And I say, do you know me? My brain 
needed a wash. And thank the good Lord, he washed it. Praise God. They say things sometimes people say because they want to hurt you. They want to throw a dart at you. They want to make you belittle. And really, you stand there with your head held high. You belong to the one and only king that there is. You belong to the reigning savior. You belong to the one that's going to take you from the beginning to the end through the whole middle, and you're going to live eternity with him. Hallelujah. So if you want to stand in dead shoes, go ahead, but I'm going to stand on a rock. And it's not slippery, thank the Lord. It's not a slippery walk. Okay, no other voice will I follow, no other destiny will I fulfill. I have come too far to turn back now. Doubt, unbelief, discouragement, discord, depression, disunity, ungratefulness, selfishness, whining, <laughs> complaining, get behind me. No voice but Jesus will I listen to. No other voice will counsel me. Hallelujah. We are to wake up. And know what's happening. Praise the Lord. So we got once in a while, go back to square one and prophesy. Behold on this, O oh my people, I will open your graves and your dead thoughts that cause you to come up. Come up a little higher from your comfort zone. Step up, look up. Life is good, life is higher. And it will bring you into the land of plenty. Land of fulfilled promises. Land filled with houses that you did not build, then you shall know he wants to show you, know what, that he is the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, the Lord is never done with us. As far as you, the Lord will deal with us. And as for you, the Lord will deal with us. He will, we must quit acting, thinking, talking, and looking like the world. Praise God. I will, I will be your God, and you will be my people. But, Sister Anne, is that enough? So I wrote down a few things here. He brought you from death to life. He washed your sins away. He took away your shame, and he's still taken it away. He gave you beauty for ashes. He placed your feet on the rock to stay. He gives us everlasting life. He traded our brokenness for his wholeness. Though my sins were as scarlet, he clothed me in white. He made my mistakes stepping stones, and he still does. He lifted my head. He, do you ever walk through the mall and everybody's walking around like this? And I'm not talking just because of the phone. The phone has emphasized that. But even before they had the phone in their hand, people walk around like this. And I'm thinking, what are you looking at? I'll look down sometimes to see what's down there. And it's usually just a dirty floor. I don't know what they're looking at. But they're, they want to lift their head. And then if you catch someone's eyes, they turn right away. Why? What's in your eyes that you don't want me to look at you? That's sad. He caused my feeble hands to turn to holy hands, lifted up in praise to him. Never be ashamed to raise your hands. I don't care if you're in a store. Uh, uh, well, in your car, be careful. Only lift one. But uh, <laughs> always lift your hands to the Lord. If someone walks up with a gun and says, stick them up, you're going to go like this. Well, why not do that to the Lord and give up? I give up, Lord. I am yours. Yes, Lord, I praise you. Don't be ashamed to lift your hands. <clears throat> there is nowhere I go that he has not already been there. He has prepared my path. Who loves you enough to prepare your path? Only Jesus. He knew my birth and he knows my homecoming. I usually say it different. He knows my birthday and he knows my dead day. <laughs> but I thought today it would probably be nicer to say homecoming. <laughs> but I just wrecked it. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Okay, Jesus is our Alpha and our Omega. A to Z. We have 26 letters and 44 sounds from A to Z. He's my answer. He's my best friend. He's my commander in chief. He's my deliverer. He's my encourager. He's my finisher and forgiver. Hallelujah. He's my glory. He's my healer. He's my intercessor. Hallelujah. He's my justifier. 
He's my keeper. He keeps me. Lord and my love. He's my mansion. In him, there's room for me. A lot of people may not want me to come to their house, but Jesus wants me. Think about that sometimes when you're feeling left out. Jesus wants me. For And I have new hope. I have hope that he has given me. Oh, it's for opening doors. If Jesus doesn't open the door, I don't go through it. He's my protector. He's my quiet time. He's my restorer. He's my second chance. And how many more chances? I probably, there's not a number for how many chances the Lord has given me. Hallelujah. He's my teacher. He's my understander. He understands me. And he helps me to get wiser. He's my victory. He's my wisdom. He's my example. He's my yoke destroyer. And he is my zeal. Praise God. Why are you always smiling, Sister Anne? Why are you always saying you're good? Why are you always happy? You don't know where I come from. You don't know, have no idea where I come from. Can he find faith in you when he returns? With an almighty yes, say he can. He will find faith in me when he returns oh dry bones hear the word of the lord move come together live know your god be his people can a man have two masters the bible says no you will love one and hate the other i don't know how people can know about the lord and not be the lord's there is a conviction that i would never want to live under we get conviction when we think wrong. When If you actually do wrong, you get that conviction. But to continually live wrong with that conviction over you, I think I'd rather carry a 500-pound weight on my back. That's not a good, as soon as I start to feel that feeling, boy, I go <coughs> cry into the Lord <coughs> and say, Lord, lift this. Lift this. And help me to be better. Praise God. Praise God. We are to be his people. We choose life. We live. Surround us, Lord, so much that it's only you we hear and we see. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And I love you, Jesus, to be coming out of your mouth all day. Be glorified. All power, all honor, all glory is yours, Lord. And remember, don't compare you to someone else. We are all different. Because once you start comparing, you start competing. And once you start competing, you start compromising. We don't want to compromise. We want to do what the Lord has for us. Everybody, the Bible says, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. We work out our salvation. We're all different. When I first got saved um, in the 70s, the Tammy Mae was on TV. Tammy Faye, I don't know if you people even know her anymore. <laughs> but the Lord, when I got saved, told me, wash my face. Because I wore lots of makeup. And so I obeyed. And I washed my face and I threw away all this glittery stuff and junk. And then I turned Christian TV on, and she had on more makeup than I wore in a month. And she's preaching the word of God. And I thought, well, that's not right. What, what's going on here? And I talked to somebody, and they said, are you on TV? Did you live her life? Where'd you wear your makeup? She didn't wear her makeup there. Now, why don't you just keep your eyes on the Lord and let her live her life, and you stay over here where you belong? I said, well, okay, good rebuke, <laughs> you know. So we can't compare, we can't compete, and we cannot, under any circumstance, compromise. We know our walk. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Isn't he good? And between that and the song, I hope you remember, speak to the dry bones. 
And when they rattle, don't get scared. And when they stand up, don't run. And when they begin to breathe, don't question. But let it be in the hands of the Lord. And soon you will turn and see your family, your sick, and your possessed set free. Hallelujah. You want to see that day? Let's stand. Praise God. He is so good. All right, let's pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray this word sink into hearts, Lord Jesus, and that you bring it to their remembrance, Lord, every time they come in a situation where there's dry bones rattling in front of them, Lord, that we serve you and you are all together and you are going to make us all together. Hallelujah, because you know, the word says you finished the work you started. And I know you started a work in everyone in this building today. And Lord Jesus, finish it, Lord. Finish it, Lord. And we give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. How many appreciate that word this morning? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we thank you for coming. We ask you to join us in the family room next door for some fellowship and refreshments. And uh, it's a time to encourage one another. But if anybody does need any uh, special prayer, feel free to come on up front here. But we love you. Be blessed. Have a great week this, this week. And uh, remember... You've been to service. Now go be the church in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.